Hey, 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 and welcome to Big Z's Project, a new series here on Big Z's Garage where I get to share with you the projects I'm doing in my garage. And this year for 2020, it is chopping, bobbing, and customizing my 2000 Yamaha 1600 Roadstar. I hope you enjoy it. Stick around. Thank you for sticking around, and I hope that if you haven't already, please subscribe and share this with your friends, and if you want to, hit that bell notification so that you're notified every time we put out new content. Well, if I'm going to tell you a little bit about the project I'm working on, I guess uh, it's not going to help by me showing you where it is right now. I probably should show you where it has been, and here is a picture of when I first picked up the uh, my Roadstar and uh, it looked really good and a lot of you are probably saying why the heck did you chop this up <laughs> and take everything out and stuff so forth and so on well let me show you what started it all this is the carburetor off of my Roadstar and you might see Abraham Lincoln sitting right there with a drill through his head. That right there, before I rebuilt this carburetor, there was a spring coming out of this section, this little cap. And uh, it comes OEM as plastic, and as you know, this is a hot area on the motorcycle, and I'm in Arizona, so heat, 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 even when the motorcycle isn't on, this, uh, this starts to, to wear out. In fact, after, since I've put it on, there's a big old crack across here. I have a friend on Facebook that is milling one of these out of copper. And copper is significant, and I'll, I'll share with you why. But this uh, carburetor has been rebuilt all the way. All the consumables, all the wearable items have been replaced. Um, it has been jetted for my altitude, and um, it's ready to go on this this engine here, but I've got some plans uh, to do. My wife gets worried every time I start to work on something because she's afraid that when she comes into the garage, what she saw before as a complete motorcycle turns out to be a motorcycle stripped down to the bare bones. And she was right this time around. Um, I took the opportunity that I had to rebuild my carburetor and in doing so I figured you know what this engine needs to be cleaned up and the only way I could reach a few things is taking it out of the frame and while I got it out of the frame I might as well powder coat the frame and do some minor fiber fabrication for a, a new tank that I'm going to be putting on. I took off the old tank and we're going to be putting on this old peanut. Got to do some fabrication for that. And, uh, you know, just one thing <laughs> leads into another, and I, uh, I have grand ideas for this, uh, for this bike. And uh, what I want to do is give you a brief overview of these things, and then as I start to work on them, I will share with you my progress. Um, I plan on doing a lot of learning. In fact, uh, there's, there's quite a bit of learning that I'm going to need to do. I, last time I welded, I was in high school at Staten Union High School in Oregon, uh, and that was oxycetylene. I moved before I had a chance to get into stick and TIG and all the other type of welding, and the school that I went to, uh, that class was full, so I, I never took my welding desires any further than that. But this time around, I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna figure out, uh, with some help from uh, YouTube, with some help from my friends who are welders, so I'll be sharing the, that process with you. So the color scheme for this bike is gonna be a very, very dark purple. When you look at the frame and anything right now that is black, it's gonna look black. 
but in certain lights, in the sunlight, you will get a hint of a really dark purple. Anything that is chrome on this motorcycle, you are going to find it looking like copper. So I'm trying to figure out different ways that I can uh, get that copper look without actually being copper because copper has a tendency to, to patina. And while I think that would look really cool, um, I don't think it's going to be the, what I want to see on, uh, on this bike. I have um, a few things I'm going to do here on the, on the frame. The frame is going to be fun because I'm going to be grinding down a lot of the tabs that are on there for the uh, stock uh, material. I'm going to be fabricating a new uh, electrical box uh, to hold some electrical things that I'm going to be doing. As well as I'm going to be putting a, um, a really cool idea that I got from a friend um, in regards to a seat that will fit my, my backside. A lot of these Springer seats that I've, I've found out there aren't for big boys like me. Also in that particular case, I've got to come out and cut out some of these mounts here. Uh, I mentioned that uh, I've got a peanut tank. So the old tank I sold, and so the new peanut tank has got to fit in here. However, it is a, a tank that is made for a different type of bike. So I need to do some fabrication for mounts. I've got to cut off some tabs from the tank. Uh, or figure out a way to get it to, to bend along here and utilize these existing mounts here. Because of that, my coils are going to be moved. I've got to take and cut off these brackets here, grind it down so it's nice and smooth. And on this side of the, um, the bike, the coils will sit on the left side of the, uh, the motorcycle, the engine, with this device. So I have this device here, and this device will sit right down here if you can see it. And off of these little parts here will sit my Dana coils. And then the cables will come out and go into the spark plugs. And, uh, and right here in this particular spot will be the push starter. That button will be what uh, I use to start the button, start the bike. And then once I've got that all fabricated up, I'm contemplating removing the kickstand. I, I'm still kind of thinking if I should keep it or not. However, uh, what I'm talking about is the kickstand. I'm, I'm contemplating taking the kickstand off. I'm adding some air ride, and the air ride will not only adjust the smoothness and the, the flow of the, the swing arm, but also um, lower the bike all the way to the frame on the ground. I will not need a, uh, a kickstand to uh, hold my bike up. Um, however, this is a very chunky piece of metal. And man, that is gonna take a lot of work getting off. And then I've gotta figure out a way or a place to be able to put the neutral switch or the kickstand switch so that when the bike is down, and that's probably just gonna to have to be a simple little lever as the bike goes down, that it will, a toggle switch of some sort. But that is, uh, that's the plan so far. I am uh, totally redoing the electrical. I have already butchered <laughs> the, uh, the wiring and everything like that for the motorcycle. Um, I am going to be incorporating the uh, M unit, the Moto Gadget M unit blue. And what that's going to do is that's going to basically do everything um, non engine related. So I'm keeping all the wires for the engine that help in, in the, the starting and the, um, uh, the running aspect of, of the engine. And then everything else, the start the stop, the on-off switches, the, uh, the lighting, the tail lights, the indicators, uh, an alarm system, uh, all that other stuff is going to be incorporated into the Moto Gadget M Blue. Um, I'm going to be using a uh, RFID uh, remote switch or RFID switch on and off where I'm going to embed a microchip into the finger of one of, one of the fingers of my glove 
and I'll have a hidden RFID reader that once I swipe that ID, it turns it to the on position or the off position. And then by simply pushing the starter button, away we go, right? Uh, I have a friend who's gonna come and help me uh, tuck away, hide, and, and uh, make sure that most of the wiring is hidden, uh, obviously except for the coil wires and things like that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. I, I do have a few more other things that I have done. And yes, it's March in Arizona and the garage is already starting to get hot. I may have to invest in some sort of cooling system to keep this area cool so I don't sweat like crazy. Um, but I have other little things, lighting, uh, some LED uh, tail lights, indicator lights. Uh, one thing that I'm excited about here is this product. So this is a, um, and most people would think that I'm gonna put it like this on the back wheel. This is where the back axle goes, right through here but I'm actually doing it this way. And this is gonna be about that high off of the ground. Yeah, we're gonna have this basically is where the whole belt drive and everything like that is gonna be tucked away behind here. So this is gonna be really close into the wheel and this is gonna be really close to the bottom of the street or to the street. And uh, we'll have the reflective light here to to show off the license plate. But uh, this product, I had to do a little bit of uh, modification to it. We'll go into some of those other things as we hit those areas. So basically, just to recap, it's a 2000 Yamaha 1600 Roadstar. Uh, there's a lot of definitions and we can go into, uh, um, you know, the semantics of what a chopper is versus a bobber and, and, and so forth, and that's why I call it, I'm, I'm chopping it. I'm chopping out a whole lot of stuff. So in one sense, it's a chopper. I'm bobbing off some things and I'm extending some things. So in other case, it's a bobber. Um, but first and foremost, it is a customized bike. I'm gonna be customizing it a lot. I'm one of those people that don't like to have something that everybody else has. I like to make it unique and make it my bike. And so we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna have some fun um, with it. I'm not ashamed to tell people that it is a Yamaha. It's not a Harley. It's not a, any other motorcycle. It is a Yamaha through and through. However, with that said, it is my Yamaha. It's something I customize. So I will be removing a lot of Yamaha badges. Um, a lot of the, the plates and the covers on the engine that have Yamaha on it, they're going away. Um, whether they're going to be blank or whether they're going to be the name of the bike that I'm going to call it. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but uh, hopefully uh, you stick around with me. If you would like, please subscribe. Share this with your other biker friends, all your other friends. Leave comments. I really like to hear your ideas and your thoughts. Call me crazy. Leave me a thumbs down. Tell me why you left the thumbs down, what it was that I said or or, or did that you thought was kind of weird or, or didn't, wasn't worthy of a thumbs up, tell me about it. I'd love to hear it. Um, also, thumbs up if you feel that uh, I'm on the right track or you like what you're seeing. I'm developing a Teespring t-shirt um, uh, website where you can go and you can pick up different t-shirts and stuff, designs that I've created for all the various shows on Big Z's Garage and uh, Big Z's Projects is one of them. Uh, creating a, a, a new t-shirt right now that will be launched pretty soon. You can go on there and all the proceeds help with uh, my builds, help with production, help so that the echo that you may hear in the audio uh, is gone because I have proper mics um, or lighting and things like that. So uh, your help in purchasing some of that merch is really gonna go a long way with, uh, with my projects. Well, I think this is the time that I say thank you and we'll see you in the next episode. Man, I really love filming in the morning. 
here in Arizona, afternoons can get really, really hot. Here it's had the time to cool down. Most of the kids and people are asleep and the birds are chirping. I don't mind the bird noises while I'm filming. It just, uh, it gives some reality to where I'm actually at. Um, every now and again, you'll hear a sliding screen door open and shut and muted conversation in the background from my, my neighbors, but uh, this is a great time of day to film. My wife suggested that uh, I might throw in some little tidbits after each show. Uh, a little bit of information about me, uh, some personal stuff, or, or just, uh, I don't know, bloopers and things. I've been trying to add some bloopers and stuff at the end of the reel, but I figured this time I'd share a little bit of something that wasn't uh, related to motorcycles or, or other types of things. But one of the unknown things about me is I really like making chili. I've entered a few competitions, mostly church chili cook-offs and, and things like that. You know, the steaks are your name written on a plaque. Never won anything. Um, I guess because most people really like those chilies that are all full of, you know, uh, I don't know, capsicums and, and uh, beans of all things. Oh my gosh, don't get me started on beans and chili. Um, and you know, the green chilies and all the little fancy dancy chilies. I'm, I'm kind of a purist. Um, I really try to make uh, more of a, a Texas style chili that has no beans. Uh, the ingredients are very simple. It's meat, meat, uh, some tomato, uh, tomato sauce, a boatload of spices. And uh, if it's just me or I'm cooking with for someone who was expecting a, a good hot chili, I'll throw in some uh, little dash of ghost pepper, some scorpion pepper in there just to kind of add a little bit of heat in there. Really little because that stuff goes a long way. But uh, I also uh, throw in my chilies from time to time. I alternate it. I'm not a, um, I don't drink alcohol, um, but I cook with it. Um, I, so I don't really know a lot about the different types of beers. All I look for are, are beers that are dark uh, beers. And so I'll throw in a can or a bottle of, um, of beer. Uh, to help add some uh, liquid to the, to the broth, but also to help get that hoppy flavor um, added in there. Uh, alcohol cooks out, so it's, it's no big deal. So if you ever come over to my house and you see um, a few bottles of beer in my in my refrigerator, that's what it's for, honest. Every now and again, I'll use a red wine, uh, one of those little cooking bottle of, of wine. Um, I, I don't have a preferred winery or anything like that, so I just kind of grab something that says it's red wine and, you know, put it in there. Um, again, the, the alcohol took cooks off, so it's good for your young ones and stuff like that. They can, they can eat this kind of chili. Um, the meats that I put in, I, I typically put in like a, um, I put in chucked or cubed ste steaks. Uh, I put in some um, pork sausage. I'll, I'll crumble that up and, and uh, I cook up some pork sausage. Of pork. I cook that first and then uh, I, I take that out of the pot, put it into a bowl, and then I, I sear up my, uh, the steaks, the cubed steak, add the, um, the sausage back in, and then I'll either pour the bottle of beer in there um, to help it kind of get in there along with the spices that I use. Um, the last thing I put in there is my, uh, my really hot peppers. Um, again, that's if I'm cooking for myself. If I cook for my family, I, I take it out. They don't like real hot spicy. Um, I'll throw in a, a can of um, diced tomatoes. And then I'll throw in a couple cans of, uh, you know, the smaller cans of tomato sauce or tomato paste because I have a lot of liquid already in there. Um, the paste just kind of helps carry the... Uh, the seasoning and everything like that. Um, let that simmer after I've cooked it all up, brought it to a boil, I simmer it down. And um, it makes a really, really good chili. Um, again, no beans. That's sacrilegious. No beans in chili. Um, plus it's safe afterwards. <laughs> you don't, you're not gassing out the rest of the house. Um, well, this one particular time, I, a friend of mine actually got, uh, he goes hunting a lot, and he gave me some venison to try. Now, my kids have never tried venison, um, 
my my wife has, and she doesn't like it too much. So I wasn't going to say anything to anybody that I put the venison in there. Um, they were all gone when I was cooking it, and, and so I put some venison in there, and the, everything else was the same. And uh, I placed it before the family when they got home from doing their farm errands and things like that. And uh, um, my older of the two daughters that are still at home, Shelby, she looked at me and she said, Dad, this is really good. What did you do different? And I said, well, I put a different kind of meat in there. And uh, my wife looks at me, eyebrows raised, and my <laughs> Shelby goes, well, what'd you put in there? I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a hint. And if you can't figure it out, I'll let you know what it is. And uh, she says, okay, you know, she's taking her third, fourth bite. And uh, I said, okay. Your mother calls me this every single day. So Shelby had a, was taking a bite as I, I was giving the hint and uh, had a mouthful of, of stew and she stops, eyes really wide, spits it out. And she says, Beatrice, stop, it's asshole. My wife doesn't call me asshole.